Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. A driver who died in Trelawney crash yet to be identified. Cancer danger, Jamaicans cautioned when using gas stoves. And later in sports, JFF to appeal Khadija Shaw red card at FIFA Women's World Cup. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. The Trelawney police are yet to identify the driver of a Honda CRV who died following a two-vehicle accident along the Hague Main Road in the parish. The accident involved a tractor trailer and the Honda CRV. It happened about 4:30 yesterday afternoon. Now, according to police reports, the driver of the Honda CRV overtook a line of traffic and then crashed head-on in the tractor trailer. The Honda CRV burst into flames on impact. The driver of the Honda CRV was reported trapped in the vehicle and was burned beyond recognition. The burnt remains of the driver of the Honda CRV was removed from the burnt out vehicle following cooling down operations by fire personnel of the Falmouth Fire Station. Residents in St. Catherine will see a number of road repairs in their communities soon. Works Minister Everett Warmington made the announcement recently. But as you'll hear in this report, some persons are not happy with the news. Residents in West Central St. Catherine will be able to breathe easier in the coming months as millions of dollars have been earmarked to upgrade a number of the roadways and breakaways in the constituency. Works Minister Everard Warmington gave the assurance following a tour of the constituency last week. Most of the work, he says, will be done under an emergency allocation. I told the minister that I'm making available $20 million for emergency repair between Sandy Ground and Junior Ridge, based on the condition of the road. And Browns all, we have a $10 million for the lower part from Junction going up to mid part, but from Belfield coming through Marley's Hill, I'm seen for the first time because I don't normally go that far about the Browns all. So I'm um, now I'll uh, release next $10 million to take care of that. As for the Watermount Bridge, Mr. Warmington says the structure will have to be redesigned. The National Works Agency has also been tasked with removing the silt from under the bridge and creating a new embankment. This will cost some $200 to $300 million this financial year. But while those roads will be done on an emergency basis, the works minister noted that the constituency in the next financial year will see some other major infrastructure developments. This will be done through the ministry's SPARC program. Mr. Warmington says from Bamboo to Worthy Park, some $629.16 million will be spent, Ginger Ridge to Barton, over $754 million, and Spanish Down to Bamboo, $484.55 million. The works minister also noted that the flooding issues in Red Pond will finally be addressed. What we have at this stage is um, the last estimate was $280 million yeah. for the um, correction to the, the, flooding, the flood control itself. Yeah. But the whole design has been expanded, okay. so it costs far more than that. Yeah. So you have what, two contractors, two developers mm -hmm. with the government, so whatever comes, we split it in three. So I can give assure the, the people from that era and all of us that the problem we have there is, is going to be addressed um, very and that shortly. that area is going to, once it's addressed, is going to unleash a lot of development for the benefit of the people. So we look forward to that because the infrastructure is going to enable a lot of other things to happen there. Residents, however, are not phased by the announcements. I happen. feel good about hearing about this, they'll fix that thing, but when we see that, that will give me a better drive. You understand? Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm still not confident yet. We have to see something start done because a long time this we fix. Long time then come and look all type of sitting. Talk, 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 and then I'm in the moves. The Nurses Association of Jamaica is continuing its push for the government to give some category of nurses prescriptive rights. The association's president, Patsy Edwards Henry, says the process is taking way too long. Shamela Pullen reports. There are 76 nurse practitioners in Jamaica who normally cover for specialist doctors when there is a shortage. The nurse practitioner actually diagnoses pathological conditions. 
So you go to the nurse practitioner and he or she sees you and they assess you and come up with a diagnosis, hypertension, diabetes, psychosis. So we have the mental health practitioners and the family nurse practitioners, mm. and they actually diagnose and prescribe. Speaking on TVJ Smile Jamaica Tuesday, the Nurses Association of Jamaica's president, Patsy Edwards Henry, says they continue to face challenges. We have deep rural communities where only a practitioner is present. Mm -hmm. And that practitioner either has to wait until a doctor comes or they have to go into the, the, the areas where the doctors are, get the prescription signed, come back, ask the patients to come back tomorrow or another day or next week. The NAJ president says the Nursing Council of Jamaica has made the adjustments for the change, but the government is holding up the process. What we are asking for is the legislation for independence and autonomy of practice. Where is that legislation now? Uh, At what stage? I want to be correct because over the years we've always heard that it is far advanced. When you say over the years, like how much years? 40. So we, we, we've been asking for this for close to 40 years. <laughs> and every time we hear that it's far advanced, at one point in time, it was actually signed and then the documents um, just went Became missing. transient. Yes, it went no, missing man. for a Seriously? while. Meanwhile, a committee headed by Professor Denise Aldemeyer Shearer, which also includes the Medical Council of Jamaica, was appointed to assess the level of support for the idea. A report was done, but Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the report needs to go to Cabinet for a decision to be taken. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. Jamaicans are being urged to ensure proper ventilation in enclosed spaces where gas stoves are being used. This is after a study revealed that the appliances emit benzene levels above secondhand smoke. Kirk Wright reports. According to the Planning Institute of Jamaica 2019 survey on living conditions, 92% of households in Jamaica use gas stoves for cooking. But research at Stanford University found the chemical in the gas known as benzene increases the risk of a variety of cancers, including lymphoma and leukemia, by damaging people's bone marrow. And so Jamaicans are now being urged to ensure there is proper ventilation when using gas stoves. Poison Information Coordinator with the Caribbean Poison Network, Sharika whitelock Balasing who was speaking on TBJ Smile Jamaica today, says houses in Jamaica, due to the tropical climate, are generally built with proper ventilation compared with other countries. But she says the housing infrastructure in Jamaica have changed over the years. And I've been observing, and it's of concern to me, how smaller our windows are becoming mm. now mm. with new constructions and the internal materials that we're using. Now we have um, dry walls being used in the homes compared to before. We have more persons using air condition in, instead of using natural ventilation within their home. One of the, 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 the drawbacks for us is that we don't have monitoring or biomonitoring devices within the homes and we will not be able to afford that. She says it would be ideal for all Jamaican homes and cook shops to have an electric stove or biomonitoring devices which are used to measure for unsafe levels of toxic chemicals. But the economic reality will make this prohibitive. So we go to the next best fit precautionary measures, ensure that we have proper ventilations within our home. For, for homes in first world country, they come with a vent. Mm -hmm. So the Thank stoves you. are made with vent and so that exhaust thing goes out. In the meantime, she's recommending the government develop a policy to monitor vulnerable areas for toxins such as benzene. The government now need to um, look on what it is we have in place in terms of public health. Uh, how are we now going to start monitoring homes, especially for vulnerable populations? How often do we go into home to check their indoor air quality? 
and we can also match if we see numerous children having eye incidents so there's a prevalence of asthma within a particular area then you start doing the environmental assessment to see is benzene the only thing that we're looking for in terms of toxins no, I mean nitrogen, nitrogen dioxide, it, it does have a respiratory effect and also the carbon monoxide, okay. but mm. the benzene is more toxic. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. Five people, including three children, are now homeless in Horton, St. Elizabeth, following a fire this morning. According to reports, at about 12.20, fire was seen coming from the four-bedroom house. The fire brigade was called and two units from the Santa Cruz Fire Department responded. The victims lost everything. But when me and me sleep, me hear heart in a hall of fire. And when me jump up, me see set there so. Fire blow go up to the ceiling. And when me run for two jog, the time heart in throw them out on the fire already. And he can't hold the fire. So me turn back so I'm grab a pee pee pan. And me dash a pee pee pan the fire coming like a aisle me dash. And tell me if you run around this one and come back. If I up in the ceiling, I couldn't do nothing if I run up and down. I mean, could even find the key to pull this door to get out the peanut. At play as a fire started in a chair on the veranda. God, really look funny to the kids, them around a ball and everybody are crying, you know? And you can't help, boy, I'm not lie, so. At this time, anybody in Jamaica who can assist them, at this time, for as we are telling them, they not save nothing at all. Nothing, nothing at all. I'm going to just like somebody coming at the night and give them something, a lady to put on and something like that. When you come here, just are night here alone, she, you, know? you understand? Yeah, I tell you, it's rough. To help the family, you can call Kimola Farkasen at 876-826-9693. That's 876-826-9693. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Gaming and lottery company Supreme Ventures has acquired a 15% stake in microfinancing company Dollar Financial Services. SVL made the disclosure to the Jamaica Stock Exchange on Monday. Based on the 2.5 billion shares issued, SVL now owns $375 million financial shares. According to Monday's closing price, the company's shareholding is valued at just over $798 million. Supreme Ventures says the decision to buy into dollar is in line with its growth strategy. The company says it plans to continue expanding beyond the gaming market and make headway into other growth industries. Further afield, Germany's Bayer AG says it expects to take a $2.8 billion hit from a slower demand for its glyphosate-based products, including the controversial weed killer, Roundup. The announcement came as a company lowered its outlook for the year. The company has also set aside over $15 billion to settle lawsuits alleging its herbicides are linked to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and other cancers. Bayer has denied wrongdoing but has said the payouts would end on certainty. On Monday, the Leverkusen-based company said it expected a net loss of $2.2 billion in the three months to the end of June. The firm also forecast that its pre-tax profits could fall to as low as $12.2 billion this year, compared to the over $14 billion it reported in 2022. And that's it for the Business Minute. Now for the top regional and international stories, here's Karen Ann Simpson. In the region, disgraced international football executive Austin Jack Warner has returned to the political arena hoping to boost the chances of the opposition United National Congress Party in the August 14 local government elections. U.S. prosecutors allege Warner, who served as FIFA vice president, leveraged his influence and exploited his official positions for personal gain. He is accused of receiving five million U.S. dollars in bribes, which he used to help shore up support for Russia to host the 2018 World Cup. Warner was one of 14 defendants charged in connection with the 24-year scheme that prosecutors allege was designed to enrich themselves through the corruption of international soccer. Further afield, 
A recent report from the World Weather Attribution has revealed that recent extreme heat events in North America, Europe and China are due to human-induced climate change and these events would have been extremely rare without it. The organization reports that July 2023 saw record-breaking temperatures around the world, including the highest temperature in recorded history in both China and Catalonia. According to the report, heat deaths in Mexico exceeded 200, while over 100 million people in the southern U.S. live under heat alerts. And in the U.S., several COVID-19 pandemic era benefits are set to expire this fall. About 28 million people will have to start paying their monthly school loans again. Stabilization grants for child care will also end in September, which could affect some 3 million children. And about 500,000 people could lose access to food stamps. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Karian Simpson. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jeremy Brown will have your midday sports report. Thank you.